This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Tuesday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect Aotearoa. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news the EU has suddenly realised it's on the wrong track with an unsustainable mix of policies which are leading them into blind social and economic alleys. But first, US consumer inflation expectations for the year ahead were unchanged at 3% in August, the same as in July and June. The five-year head inflation expectations was also steady at 2.8%. These same consumers said median one-year ahead expected earnings growth is expected to be 2.9% and up from 2.7% in July, and above the 12-month trailing average of 2.8%. There is nothing here suggesting consumers expect inflation to be a problem, or that it threatens their real earnings. Also not a problem is the level of wholesale inventories, which continue to run at normal levels in July, showing no early signs of business stress. But perhaps some more current data points to an issue. Total vehicle sales in the US ran at an annual rate of 15.1 million, much lower than the 15.8 million rate in July. That was softer than the expected dip to 15.4 million. And American consumer debt rose more than $25 billion in August, about double what was expected and the biggest rise since the end of 2022. The outside 6% jump was driven by revolving debt, like credit cards. It is a change that is sure to raise a few eyebrows. Across the Pacific, Taiwan said its exports were particularly strong in August at $43.6 billion. That was more than 16% better than the same month last year and far more than the 7.4% rise expected. Imports rose too by almost 12%, but that was less than expected. Taiwan's economy is certainly starring in the region, and this data reveals another big trend. Taiwan's largest export market is no longer mainland China. It is the US, and the shift has been swift. It also mirrors what is happening in other East Asian nations. In China, the threat of deflation, a risk high on Beijing's agenda, is not fading as fast as they would like. Their CPI inflation rate edged up to 0.6% in August from a year ago, from 0.5% in June, but less than the market forecast of 0.7%. Still, it was the highest level since February, mainly due to a strong pickup in food prices, especially for fresh food. However, beef prices are down by nearly 13% in a year, Lamb prices down by 6.3%. Milk prices down by 1.7% on that same basis. Meanwhile, Chinese producer prices fell by 1.8% year-on-year, the most since April, and steeper than the expected 1.4% drop. And a large investment bank, China Renaissance, has seen its share price collapse after Beijing apparently arrested its chairman on unknown charges. The bank was an important funder of China's digital economy. Local economists there aren't as positive about China's immediate prospects anymore. Beijing is losing the hearts and minds of an important set of influences. Halfway around the world, a new EU report said they must be spending about 800 billion euro per year on investment if they're not to lag the US, China or Japan in productivity projects. Without that, they'd be forced to choose between climate, economic and foreign policy goals. That is about 5% of the bloc's GDP and will require a massive new commitment. Without this extra investment, the report says the EU will be unable to finance its social model and will have to scale back some, if not all, of its ambitions. It is a tipping point moment for Europe as their competitiveness wanes. They need to change direction. In Australia, all eyes are on the fast-moving iron ore price. In some markets, it's now below $90 a tonne, which represents a 23% fall in a year, down a massive 38% since the start of 2024. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now just on 3.70% and down two basis points from yesterday. The price of gold will start today up $5 at $2,502 an ounce. And oil prices are up a dollar at just on $68.50 a barrel in the US, while the international Brent price is now just under $72 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today at 61.6 US dollars and marginally softer from this time yesterday. 
against the Aussie were 30 basis points softer at 92.3 Australian cents. Against the euro were unchanged at 55.7 euro cents. That all means our trade weighted index starts today at 69.6 and little change from yesterday. And the Bitcoin price starts today at $56,426 and up 3.8% from yesterday. Volatility over the past 24 hours has been moderate at just under plus or minus 2.4%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes and you can get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston and we'll do this again tomorrow. Tomorrow.